وَلَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Because you have in the Messenger of Allah a fine example. Here's the important point. And in accordance to the degree that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is followed, does the slave attain whatever he actually ends up attaining of relaxation of the heart, delight of the eye, and joy of the soul. So Shaykh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, he says concerning this, that all of these matters of joy of the soul and delight of the eye and peace, and these things a person can't attain except by following the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam emulating him following his footsteps copying him sallallahu alayhi wasallam everything that the messenger of allah alayhi salatu was salam attained if it is the case that you want to attain something similar to that you have to follow him you have to imitate him you have to copy him and it all depends upon how much you copy him how much you follow him how much you imitate him to that degree will you attain whatever you attain of joy, of bliss, and of delight. Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, Therefore he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is at the peak of perfection in relation to relaxation of the chest, elevation of rank, and pardoning of sins. And his followers have such a portion of that that is proportionate to the, to the degree that they follow him and Allah is the one from whom aid is sought. Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he had a relaxed chest. He had, he had the one that was the most alleviated. He is the one that had the most elevated rank. Every single act of worship that we engage in, that we do, that we engage in, that we take part in, in it is an elevation of the rank of Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. How? Every single act of worship that we engage in, that we take part in, in it is an elevation of the rank of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. How? We're following Him. When you pray salat, you're praying, copying Him, following Him. When it is the case that you make saum, you make hajj, when you make umrah, it is to asiyan bihi alayhi salatu wasalam. Following Him, copying Him, imitating Him sallallahu alayhi wasalam. How many acts of worship? Within which do we say his name? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. So the Messenger of Allah, he has relaxed chest, relaxed chest. He has an elevated rank. He has his sins pardoned, and you can get not the same level of relaxation of the chest, not the same level of high rank and elevation of rank, not the same level of pardoning of sin, but you can get a portion of that. And the portion that you get is dependent upon how closely you follow him. Shaykh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, he mentions an important point, And that is the fact that it's not enough. A person who wants to say that he's following the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam. For you to be like, for you to get that relaxation and those achievements and those attainments that he attained. For you to get a portion of that isn't by merely saying he was, an, he was an abqari, he was a genius, he was a, 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 you know, a genius or somebody that is incomparable, right? Why? Because loving him just for his that, loving him just for his shakhsiya, loving Muhammad sallallahu just because of his personality in and of itself, without it being related to a love that is an Islamic love, a love that is born and produced from creed, from your iman, that love is going to be of no fruit, it's going to be of no benefit. How do we know that? Because isn't it the case that Abu Talib loved the Messenger of Allah, but that was mahabba shakhsiyya, that was just loving the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, as far as his personality is concerned. The only type of love of the Messenger of Allah, the only type of acknowledgement that he was a great man, that he was somebody that there is no other man that can compare to him, isn't the type of, isn't the type of astonishment and amazement and regard that the, that the Orientalists, that some of the Orient, Orientalists have. 
Michael H. Hart, he authored a book, The 100 Most Influential Men in History, who was number one. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi but it's going to be of no benefit. Why? Because the only type of regard for this man, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, that brings about some relaxation is the one that is accompanied and is as a result of having had Iman in him. That is the only type of love that brings about that relaxation in the, in the chest and alleviation in one's life. Then to conclude Ibn Qayyim, he says, similarly, his followers have such a portion of protection from Allah for them, safeguarding them, defending them, strengthening them, and aiding them, that is proportionate to the degree of their following the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So among them is the one who gives it little care, and among them is he who gives it a great deal of importance. I.e. Allah, Allah has a ma'iyyah, a ma'iyyah, a withness. Allah is with us in his knowledge, with us in his power, with us in his seeing, with every single human being, with the Muslim, with the Kafir, with the Mu'min, the Salih, and the Fajr, everybody. Allah is with the creation as far as his knowledge and his power is concerned and his hearing is concerned and so on and so forth from his attributes that necessitate that. However, there is another ma'iyah, there is another withness of Allah. That is a ma'iyah khasa, a specific form of withness. And that is for whom? To who, which people get that ma'iyah of Allah, that Allah is with you, wherever you go, He is there with you, He supports you, He aids you. The believers, the righteous ones. And the more that you follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the more of this ma'iyah of Allah that you will have, the more of this support that you will have from Allah. The more that Allah will be there defending you, safeguarding you, and protecting you. Ibn al-Qayyim, he then says, Therefore, whoever ends up finding goodness, let him praise Allah in this life and the next. If you find that ma'iyah of Allah, if you find that inshirah of your sadr, relaxation in your life, in your chest, in this life, then, let, then praise Allah. Praise Allah now, in the afterlife. If it is the case that you find that you are righteous in this life and thus Allah rewards you in the afterlife, praise Allah. But whoever finds anything besides that, let him blame nobody but himself. If it is the case that your life is suffocating and suffering, then don't blame anybody except yourself. Not material suffocation. But suffocation of your soul, spiritual suffocation, suffocation as a result of you having become distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm.